So in this part of the class, we're going to talk about um, signed numbers. And specifically for this segment, we want to look at how you might implement um, an adder that could be used for signed or unsigned values. So I'm going to focus mostly on kind of the act of adding binary values, but then also the process of implementing that addition with hardware. And then later on, we want to talk about um, complements, um, this process of kind of negating values so that we can um, do subtraction. Um, and by negating, I mean, if I wanted to do, if I wanted to say, do something like a three minus four, what I really could do is once I have my adder, just add a negative four. So if I can find a way to give me the additive inverse, that thing, that value, which when added to the, to, uh, to the four, which I added, it gives me a zero. Um, we're going to call that the additive inverse. And it's not always just a matter of um, changing signs. Mechanically, I don't know how you change the sign on a piece of mechanical equipment. So we find a way to build equipment so that when the additive inverse is added, the result is zero. Um, so it's, it's called the method of complements. So let's start looking at the addition of um, just a binary value, assuming that there's no sign information associated with it. And so in looking at this, um, let's try to figure out quickly what these two values are and what the sum of these two values is. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 are the um, place odors. Those are the magnitudes um, that each bit position occupies. And so when I look at this and figure out what this particular decimal value is, you'll see that if there's a 16 and an 8 and then a 2 and a 1. So 24 plus 2 and a 1. 24 plus 3 is a 27. So that binary stream of values represents the decimal 27. Now if I look at the next value underneath it, it's a 32 and then there's a 1. Um, so this particular stream of bits will give you 32 plus 1 or 33. Um, I'm already showing the sum here, but let's kind of build this up before I show it in its entirety. So if you were to add uh, these values together, um, for example, the 1 and a 1 will give you a 2. And since 0, 0 represents a zero, zero, one is the decimal 10 and one zero is the decimal two. When we add binary values together, since we only have the option of adding a zero and a zero, a zero and a one, a one and a zero, one, one, the answer is always going to be a zero, a one, a one. And then we have a special case here where we have two binary values. It gives us something unique. Um, so here, this is that special case where we get a 2. 1 and a 1 is a 2 with a carry out. A 1 and a 1 is again a 2. And we carry out, which becomes this column's carry in. So that just is a 1. 1 and a 0 just gives us a sum of a 1. 1 and a 0 is a sum of a 1. 0 and a 1. And then a 0. When you look at that stream of binary bits and you add them together you'll see that there's a 32 plus 16 48 and then these two make up a, uh, a 12 48 and 12 is a 60 so that makes sense that when we've added these two values together we end up with the sum of 60. Now the thing to pay attention to here is um, that there was some type of binary operation um, that occurred at each stage and we want to see if there's a logic gate that can work with two bits to give us that result. So that is the question that I have right now. I want to know what logic gates um, what logic gates 
or logical operation and or exclusive or um, can be used to accomplish binary addition right so how is it that we can get a binary addition result from those two streams um, of bits so what can we do to get that and if you look at this carefully um, let's think about the options that we know about we know about the anding of two bits the or and exclusive or and when we're anding two bits um, there's a truth table that's associated with the and and the and um, states that the output is true only if both inputs are true um, so that's the only time that an output is true um, and if you look at this we get a true here but we don't have two inputs that are true so clearly um, it doesn't look like an AND gate is going to get us a result that would give us the proper sum so that doesn't appear to be it and if we look at an OR, 0 OR with 1 will give us a 1. That looks like it works. The way an OR works, right, if you remember, um, the way an OR works is 0 OR with 0 um, should give us a 0 because the logic of an OR gate states that either one of the inputs has to be a 1 to get an output of a 1. So in that case, that would give us an OR. Now, as we look at this, this meets the requirement for an OR operation, an OR operation, an OR operation. Um, and this one's just merely a 1 OR with a 0. So that also works. But this last bit over here, 1 and one ORD with one should not be a zero if this is an OR operation. But what does work is not the OR operation, but rather the exclusive OR operation, which states that exclusively one of the two input bits must be a one in order for the output to be a zero. So the, exclure, the exclusive OR operation actually works um, to for this scenario that we have here now let's pull that over so we're going to use the fact that we can um, use an exclusive or operation to get our stream of bits um, it works mostly um, when you look at the exclusive or and what goes on with an exclusive or um, let's look at this example here um, we do it appears as though the sum 0 and a 0 is a 0 0 and a 1 is a 1 1 and a 0 is a 1 here we get something a little bit different we have a 1 and a 1 and it, it is a 2 which means we have a 0 but we also have a carry out that has to be accounted for um, so we have a zero, but then our carry out should be accounted for. So let's focus on trying to um, account for that, that carry out, as well as the sum. So what would that look like? Imagine that you have two bits, A and B, and you're going to generate a sum, but there's the chance that you'll also generate a carry and that's a carry out into the next adjacent column so zero 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 one one zero one one are all the possible combinations if I'm adding those two together the zero and uh, zero is a zero zero and a one is a one is a one a one and a zero is a one one and a one is a two so that's going to generate our carry out for those other um, additions there was no carry associated with those. So we have now um, 
the set of inputs and outputs required that will allow us to implement um, um, both the sum and the carry out. Later on, we're going to learn that we could use a so-called Carnal map um, or sum of products to generate the sum. But for right now, this is simple enough that we can do it through observation. And so this one, the sum output will be the exclusive or, and the carry output will be um, uh, a logic gate. Which logic gate does that appear to be? Um, well, it's only true when both inputs are true, when A and B are true. So that would be the AND gate. So we get a circuit um, that requires two outputs. One would be the sum, and then the other output would be the carry. And so we're going to look at those two input bits, bit A and bit B. Um, and that bit A and bit B, remember, we had a stream of bits here. And so this would be kind of the bit A, bit B. And since we have multiple columns, it's really A sub 0, B sub 0, A sub 1, B sub 1, A sub 2, B sub 2. Right, so we will have multiple columns um, required to actually do a stream of bits. So this is only giving us two bits, but the result of one of the additions is what trickles over to the adjacent column. Um, the same input that generates the sum A and B are also associated with the carry, um, the carry out. So that is the hardware to implement addition, um, at least two bit addition. So it doesn't do three bit addition. And we would need to do three bit addition, for example, had we um, had a stream of bits that looked like this maybe. One and a one is a two. Carry out those three bits would give us a three. Those two bits would give us a two. Those two bits give us a three. And then that's a three. And that's a carry out. So this does the job for two bits well, but it does the job less well for, actually it doesn't do the job well at all for, for three bits. So it's not a full adder, but I can take a couple of these and um, arrange them in a way so that I could do full addition with three bits. So this is a half adder, which could be combined. Um, two of these could be combined to um, generate a full adder. Now, we have at least the start of, of equipment that can do addition. Um, so we haven't talked about numeric representation. We've just talked about the hardware right now that can do the addition. Our goal is to be able to use this hardware that can do addition. Um, we also want to be able to use it to do subtraction. Um, so we want to be able to take something that's like this, a 12 minus 4, and then use the adder and then add to it a negative four. So we want to use the adder, but somehow we want to change the value of, um, of one of the bit streams so that we essentially are adding a negative value or the additive inverse. So that way we want to, and we will be able to use a single adder, um, right? It's a hardware that can do addition but a full adder, more proper adder. We want to use an adder um, for both addition and subtraction. 
And so subtraction essentially is just going to mean taking an adder and then forming the complement or the additive inverse. Um, as a peek ahead, uh, the next topic will be um, looking at how we um, essentially get the complement or negate a bit stream. Um, by that I mean you can take a stream of values. Let's say that we have this value here. We know that that value is a positive 4. Now, in the next segment, um, in a later segment, we're going to show that by simply flipping the bits, right, just by inverting those bits, we get the ones complement. If I flip the bits and add one, right, so this part, just flipping the bits, inverting the bits, is nothing but the ones complement, and I'll define complement more completely. Um, with a later lecture, I get the ones complement. If I add one to it, this value right here, one plus one is zero. Uh, one plus one is a two. One plus one is a two. One, one, one. Um, by doing that, we're going to see that we can get the twos complement. So, if I now add the twos complement um, to the original value that we had before. Let's see what happens. So I'll take my zero zero one zero zero, and then I'll take my one 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 zero zero. And when you add those two together, zero plus zero. So right, we know this one is a positive four. Let's think about this one here. The second stream of bits, zero plus zero, um, zero plus a zero, one plus one is a two which is a 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is a 2, which is a 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is a 2. Um, and then the hardware is fixed. It's not, even though we could continue this process um, with the carry out, but the hardware is fixed. The numbers that it represent, the numbers, uh, the way we in which we represent numbers, will have a fixed number of bits. So this is a zero. So this that we've done, this twos complement, is our way of getting an additive inverse of the original value. So that's what we're going to do. We're still going to continue to use addition, but the number that we wish to subtract, we're going to get the additive inverse or the negation of it, or the twos complement. And the two's complement for any binary stream is fairly simple. You just simply flip the bits and add one. Um, more of the thinking behind representing numbers using complements um, will come up a bit later.